Hello everyone, welcome to Ignite, where we connect, grow, and inspire. As you prepare to listen to the sermon today, I pray that you are blessed. Let's get started. Somebody in the house, say amen. 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 I'm old school, so please, you pardon me. Please, I'll bring some little old school, but please, I know you understand. This is just who I am. Praise the Lord. Like the word that we'll be talking about, we'll be listening, that God wants to speak to us. Uh, The topic says, my resolve, my resolve, my resolve. And uh, during the week, I just went through the dictionary just to, you know, get the meaning of what my resolve means. So I went to the, I, I googled it anyway, Webster Dictionary. It gives me this uh, definition about the word. It says, to deal with successfully, to deal with successfully, clear up, to find an answer, to make clear or understandable, to find a mathematical solution of to split up into two or more components, especially in assigned directions, to reach a firm decision about, and many, many more. It was, I mean, a lot on just one word. But there's one of them that I just, you know, I grabbed, I said, okay, this one, I think it goes with what my understanding of what my resolve means. That means to reach a firm decision about, about what? And just because we are going to the end of the year, a firm decision about the year 2020. What are the things that I want to hold firm and believe that God, this is what I trust you to help me get myself to be able to do. Praise the Lord. So I want to ask a quick question. 2019, when we were getting ready to doing the same thing that we are about, we are doing right now. How many of you had your yearly resolution. Don't be shy. I had my own. My hands up. Let's raise up our hand, please. I know most of us, we do. Every year we have something written down. If not written down, we have it in our heart that this coming year, this is what I want to accomplish. This is what I want to do. This is the thing that I want to make sure that I get myself to do. So every year, people, even unbelievers, they have something, they write it down and say, hey, this year, 20, the coming year, I'm going to make sure I do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do that. Praise the Lord. So everybody has, we always do that. 
But is there anything wrong in writing or having a resolution? It's a question I'm throwing to everybody. Is there anything wrong? No. Don't be afraid. No, there's nothing wrong. Praise the Lord. There is nothing wrong for me to have a resolution and say, this coming year, I want to accomplish this. This coming year, I want to make sure I get this done. This coming year, I want, I mean, if I, let's say someone there just finished a degree. I mean, the following year, if you're not going for your master's, you should be thinking of this coming year, I want to get a job. So is there anything bad for me to now say, I want to write it down. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to get my own apartment. I'm going to get my own, I mean, furnish my house and get that written down. There is nothing bad. So there is nothing, nothing bad in having a resolution. But there's something I want us to get from this. And that takes us to our Bible text, which is Habakkuk 2, from 2 to 3. It's a popular Bible verse that we all know. Habakkuk 2, chapter 2, from verse 2 to 3. I'm going to read. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is set for an appointed time, but at the time it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So this made me to go back even to the genesis of this uh, Bible text. So I started from the beginning of Habakkuk. It's only three chapters, so I mean, it's something I can deal with. Let me just go over and see how did this verse came about. So it's a story uh, written about the vision of Habakkuk. He wrote a vision about what God revealed to him. In this vision, he, the, he had two visions. The first one, he was complaining. And in this first complaint, he, he complained about the present situation in the land. That means, uh, why is God doing this and that in the land? And uh, all the violence, all the troubles, and all the things that were going on there. Just like we also complain in situations, why, this, why is this not working the way I planned it? Why are things going wrong in this safe situation? Why are things not, I mean, why is the government being run the way we think shouldn't be running? Or all the things, complaints, I mean, which we know. Human, we do that, we complain a lot. But now God answered him. And in, in, in God's response, God responded by telling him of all the good things he has done. God told him of all the wonderful works. When we get home, we can read it. He did not stop there. He complained again. And in his second complaint, complaints, he, he told God who he is. He was now talking about uh, the greatness of God. You know, you are this, you are that, you did that, you did this. But if you are so great, why allowing these people to destroy our land? Why, uh, why are you making, uh, he used the word, he said, why are they, are you allowing them to catch us like a fish and now uh, for, for, for us to be killed? So after that complaint, God responded in verse 2, in chapter 2 again. And in God's response, and that's where we have the Bible text that we have. And that was when God now told him and said, you know what? I want you to do what? Write the vision. What really do you want me to do? Make it plain. So that whoever sees it, even if you're not there, they will see and they will run with it. And at the end, you'll be able to say, yes, the Lord has done this. So that you will not be complaining of all the things that you see. You will be able to see even deeper things. You'll be able to see how God delivered you because you have it written down. Praise the Lord. And God now said that at the end, you will see that all that I said I would do, I would do it. If I say I'm going to deliver, even though you are going through troubles, I will deliver you. If you look at all the situations that you have gone through, it can be troubles in life. But when you look at the end of it, you will give glory to God. That sometimes, thank God that I went through that situation. Because you were able to understand some things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So today, I, before I go further, I want to just give you a little testimony of something that happened to me this uh, last week, before Christmas. My sister, she's here. My husband is also here. I mean, Christmas shopping, everybody, we all were running around, trying to get things for the kids, 
prepare for, you know, Christmas uh, dinner. So we went to Walmart. So I was in there, you know, trying to get things for my kids. Okay, my son wants this, he wants that. You know, let me get this. So in the process, I did not know that I dropped myself in somewhere. So we left. But one thing with me, cell phone is something that, you know, I'm not the kind of person that is always like, you know, 24-7 on the phone. So I did not notice. But I was on my way trying to call my husband that, yes, we are on the way, in the car. We were just halfway home. I just noticed. I called my sister and said, okay, can you help me get my phone in the back? She looked inside. She couldn't find it. So I started retracing my step that, oh, my God, this phone again, my God. Because I just got that phone last year, Christmas. How will I get a new phone and, you know, get home and say, you know, this is another Christmas. I need another one. So I said, this is not going to happen. So I said, you know what, let's turn back. So we, we turned back and we went to Walmart. And you know, Walmart people around this time, they don't have time for anybody. They were all like, you know, busy trying to, I mean, it was getting late. So they were all stocking for the next day. So they were all busy and me and my sister were like, please, I, I went to the cashier that I, I, I think I, I, I left my phone with you here. She said, no, you did not leave your phone here. You know, she was like, maybe while you were going, just go look somewhere else. I said, okay. So I left her. She said I should go and report to the manager or maybe to the customer service. There was nobody there. So she said I should come the following day because it was getting late. It was around 11 at night. So I now said to myself, I'm not buying another phone. I need to find this phone. Something was, because we retraced, I retraced my step and I knew it was inside Walmart that I, the last place that I saw the phone was inside this place. So we all concluded that the phone was in Walmart. So we went home. So when I got home, my, my son, now I said, you know, we can use find, uh, find my phone. Yeah. So I did not even know. I've forgotten about my iPad that you know. Because I, I, I sync both my cell phone and my iPad together. So I, and I started, and I had to call our husband because I didn't want to wake my husband up. He was already sleeping. I didn't want to tell him that I lost my phone. So I said, you know, don't, don't, even, don't even bother to, uh-uh, don't let him know. I'm going to find this phone tonight, whatever it's going to take. So I, I now, it's a long story. I'll try to cut it short. <laughs> because, I mean, it, it, when, when this happened and I went over the message, it was just God teaching me something that I need to pass to you just to help you this year. So when we now got home, I now told my sister to call her husband in Nigeria just because I didn't want to wake my husband up, that he should use his own iPhone to help him look for a phone in Walmart. <laughs> Which he did. And he was able, I mean, that made me, you know, I was like, technology is done, man. How can someone in Nigeria be looking for something in, in America and was able to tell me that the phone is still in Walmart? So, I mean, that dazed me. And even my sister was like, ah, technology, oh my God, I've never thought, you know. So we were so dazed. But at the same time, I was like, ah, this one, we must look for it. So, and I, I mean, we were all, we all knew from that that, you know, the phone is still in Walmart. So one of my son asked, is your iPad in the house, I said, yes. Where is your iPad? And because I'm not that technology person, I did not know where I put my iPad. So <laughs> I started looking around there. I said, where's my iPad? Where's my iPad? We started searching. But I left my iPad on the bed in the room. So I had to go to my room and, you know, my husband sleeping. So I would have sneaked inside, took the iPad, went inside. And the thing was not charged, dead. <laughs> so I was like, uh -huh. so what are we going to do now? So I said, you know what? Let's charge it a little, at least be able to look for it and, and be sure. It, it tells us again that the phone is in uh, Walmart. That means we will go tonight to Walmart. I don't care whatever time it is. And it was around 2 a.m. I was still on that search for my phone. So we now tried it. And the thing now told us that it's still in Walmart. But we saw the phone moving from one place to another. I was like, oh, my God. At this time, hope they've not taken my phone. I was so scared. Like, okay. So my son now said, you know, mommy, I know your phone is there. You know, we are going to find your phone tonight. I said, okay, let's go. So the three of us went against Walmart. I ran two. So when we got to Walmart, I had to, we, we took a charger because the phone was already like 2%. So we looked for a place inside Walmart. <laughs> we, we connected the phone, I mean, the iPad. I mean, and to try to get some juice so that we can get, you know, be able to know where the phone is. So the things told us that the phone was inside Walmart. And you know, we humans, we are very suspicious. 
I, just, I went back to the lady that, you know, the cashier, and I started looking at her like, I think she's the one that has my phone. Because anytime she's moving, I think that thing is moving too. So we all started, I told my sister and the, my little boy, and we all started looking at her. Ah, she's moving. Ah, the phone is moving. The phone is inside her. So we all said, today, I will not live in this place. So I sat down, and everybody was like, lady, what are you doing at this time of the day? I said, I'm looking for my phone. And if I don't find this phone, I'm not leaving. I need to find my phone. I believe this thing is telling me that my phone is where? Inside Walmart. So I sat there. So, and I asked one of them, I said, I think one of you, <laughs> one of you, have, because anytime I look at this thing, I see the thing moving around. So another lady now told me, it looked like that thing moved out of Walmart. So I now ran out. I said, stay there and let me go and search if there's someone. So I saw someone opening the door and I was like, oh my God. And my boss said, oh, that thing is out of Walmart. <laughs> they passed it to me. God have mercy. They passed it to one another and they sent my phone out. So I was like, ah. Oh. So that thing was like, I mean, the thing was telling us that the phone was outside. What really happened there? I, I really didn't know. But what we saw there really clearly showed that the phone was outside was just in the car park. So we now sat and said, okay, what are we going to do now? So my son said, no, mommy, this thing is still telling us that it's still in Walmart. So we are not going, mommy. You said it. If we don't find your phone, we are not going. But my mind started doubting, like, you know what? Let's go home. It's getting late. The worst will come to worst. I'll tell him. And whatever he was going to say, I will take it. I mean, let's just. <laughs> so, I mean, my phone said, Mommy, we're not going. Ah, uh -uh, no, you were so strong. She was the one, it was the one that was now telling me, you know, giving me, boosting me up to, you know, charging me to keep me searching for that phone. But I was really, 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 I mean, tired because it has been a very, very busy day. So after a while, I said, you know what, we will come back in the morning and see if it's still there. So it was like, it was so reluctant that he said he's not going to go. So but I, I just told my sister that, you know, it, it doesn't work. It's, we are talking about 4 a.m. now. 4 a.m. in the morning. We were still at Walmart looking for phone. So I said, well, let's go. Whatever it's going to take. I mean, I, I just, I mean, for a few days, I'll just tell him, don't buy it for me. I mean, I, mean, I already had all the things I would say in my mind that, you know what, I would gather the money myself. I would get it myself. I would do this, you know. So that was what I was running on my mind. So as we were leaving, my son kept saying, Mommy, I know your phone is there. Really, I don't know why you let us go. We, should, we would have found your phone. I said, you know, let's go. So we went. I could not sleep. It was like in my dream, I was seeing my phone on my, like, oh my God, this phone. So when he woke up, I said, you know, well, it's better I tell him because I cannot leave now without telling him that, you know, I lost my phone. So I said, I said Mommy, I lost my phone yesterday. Uh, you know, the sober voice, and you know, when you have done something wrong, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord. And I was just so sober, like, and, you know, I'll go back again. I know it's inside the Walmart because the, my phone is still telling me the phone is still there. So, but don't worry, I will find it. Okay, we'll go over there. All he was saying, you know, was, uh, we lost it. Okay. Uh, if you don't find it, you better go to the right side. I was like, oh, no, I will not go. I'm not going to the right side. We will find the phone. But my mind was like, I'll get it by myself and you know, I won't let him know. But my son woke up that very morning. I said, Mommy, let's go to Walmart. I said, No, ah, it's too early now. I, you know, I flogged the thing and I left it on find my phone, my iPad. So he said, The thing is still there, Mommy, let's go. I said, hmm. Well, no, let's just take time. Let's see. Maybe the person, will, because I don't think, how can someone leave a new iPhone? You see, I don't even know the version 10. Um, you see now? I don't even know the kind of iPhone that I have. But he knew all the things that were in my iPhone because they were the new iPhone. I, I, didn't, I, wasn't, I didn't really appreciate the phone like he did because he knew the worth and the value of the phone more than because it was a gift. And all I use my phone is text, uh, use it as a, a phone, and also email. And after that, nothing else. And also I have a game that, you know, I play. I, that, that's the only thing that I use the phone for. Every other thing I don't need the phone for. So I was like, okay, but there are some things that I use, like messages and all those things. Those were, those were the things that I was like, oh, my God, all those messages that I have in there, they are gone. But I was like, I resolved in my heart that, you know what, I will get another one. But my son said, we must go and find it. So we, around 11, 12, that was the day to Christmas. 
he now said, Mommy, let's go. He was dressed up, but I said, no. But my sister said, we have to go. Let's, so I just, you know, let me quickly take a shower, then we go. So we went. I told him, you're not going because it was like, his own was getting too much. So I said, you stay at home. Me and my sister will go and search for it. So when we got to Walmart, I went to the customer service. The customer service now said, ah, something like that happened. I don't think this, I uh, my, find my phone is not working. So your phone is gone. And I don't think, I mean, we looked and there was nothing inside it. So I was about to tell my sister again that, you know what? She said, if not, then let's go. But my sister said, let's go to the place that, this thing is still telling us your phone is still inside Walmart. If this thing is lying, let's go and search and look for the, I mean, the phone over there. So we now started, pick the iPad, and we started going and following the direction. And as we were going, the thing was telling us that you are getting closer. And I was like, and that boosted my, 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 my ability to search for that phone. So I was like, okay, I think that thing is closer. I think it's telling me it's closer. We started looking for it. So when we got to a place, the iPad and the phone now matched. So I was like, whoa, this thing is telling me the phone is around this place. So I went, you know, with that confidence, I went to the cashier around that. It was where they sell electronics. So and I said, ah, I have my, I'm looking for my phone. I came here yesterday, but the thing is saying my phone is over here. The lady looked at me and said, your phone, it said, this thing is telling you that your phone, that phone is here. No, nobody left anything for you or for anybody that they found or something like that. So I said, is, this thing is telling me. My search, my phone is telling me my phone is with you right here. She said, you know what, well, let me call my manager. I'm busy because they were all busy because a day to Christmas. So I stood there. I said, today, I know this thing is right here. I'm not going to leave this time around. I stood there, so she called the manager. The manager now said, no, we didn't find anything, but... The way I was talking, like, if I don't find this thing over here, I'm not, I'm not going. My phone is right here. She now said, okay, let me search. So she was looking around, checking all the drawers and everything. And I started looking. And I, I mean, I didn't know that thing. I, I know it is the Holy Spirit. All of a sudden, I just saw my phone right in front of me. I mean, I was like, my phone, I just inside. <laughs> so I jumped and I picked the phone. I was so happy. She couldn't believe it. Because we, they thought, you know, sometimes technology, you, uh, until you use it and it works for you, that's when you believe. And that made me like, and my sister said, wow, we never thought, even myself, I was doubting it that this thing is, maybe it's not working. But with what we've just seen now, my, search my phone, I will let the whole world know that it's working. <laughs> I mean, and that was like, when I get to Nigeria, I will use it anyhow. I will, she was... So excited, I was so excited. And what is my point here? In life, when we're searching, I mean, we're putting our resolutions together. We bring it to church. We pray over there. Then when we live out there, God is leading us this way. But because of the things of this world, we get carried away. We put God aside. Praise the Lord. At the beginning, everybody, we are ready. When God says go, you are ready to go. Because, you know, this is the beginning of the year. We all start running and you know what? It's time for us. Yes, I must do this. Yes, I must do, get these papers together. Yes. But when it's getting like the third month of the year and some things are not materializing, and that's when we start doubting God. And that's when we start le- listening to other voices out there. Friends that say, oh, I tried it last time. It didn't work. Just like all those people that told me, but thank God I have someone beside me, my family, my son especially. When you are in this race, when you resolve in God helping you, please surround yourself with good people, children of God, that you have the same mind. There's so many people out there. They will give you their own advice. They will give you their own solution. They will try to convince you otherwise. But if you, when you are doubting and you are surrounded with the right set of people, until you get to that destination, they will not leave you because they are being guided by the same person that you believe, the word, the one and only son of God, Jesus. So the first thing first, I have the five things that we quickly just talk about. We quickly go over them. That I want you to please, as you're resolving, getting ready for 2020, as you're getting yourself to prepare for this coming year, the first person I want you to never leave, don't ignore, 
Don't abandon. It's God. Just like I trusted on my phone, search my phone, find my phone. I trusted this thing, and as I was following it, what the thing was leading me to where my phone was. Don't neglect God. Don't put God aside. Let God be your companion all day. There is nothing like over-spirituality. We live because the God that we serve is spirit. He said, your God is spirit. And those that worship the Lord should worship him in spirit and in truth. Sometimes you make some turning. Once the spirit is telling you, go this way, please, my brother and sister, go that way. Don't give it a second thought because you know you have someone that is guiding you. Great plans God has for you. He said, the plans that I have towards you, they are plans of good and not of evil to take you to that great expected end. Those are his words. Those are the searching things that will guide you to those destinations, that will lead you to finding that promises that God has for you. If you do not neglect God, if you take God to be your instructor, if you take God to be the one guiding you, I promise you, I can boast confidently that you will get to that destination. I promise you. I've tried it. I've been in situations in life that even myself I've given up. But because of the people that I'm surrounded with, just like the phone, I mean the situation of the phone, when I was whining, they were able to say, you know what, this is not the time for you to cry. Stand up. Pick it up. What is the next thing to do? Let's go there. Those are the people that you need. Remember what the word of God tells you. He said he will never leave you, no. He will not. He's not a man like me. I can promise my brother and say, tomorrow I'll give you this. Tomorrow I can decide and say, you know what, I don't want to give it to you. That's man. But when God says, when God says, I'm blessing you with this, I'm leading you to this place, I'm opening this door for you, I'm making a way for you, he will surely do it. Just like the Bible text, it said, you know what? A vision, write it down. If you need to write it down, write it. If you need to put it in your heart and meditate day, meditate day and night, can you please do that? At every point, take it and begin to, to let it sink into you with God on your side. And as you begin to take every step, he's going to begin to, he's going to start leading you in the right direction. Let me quickly go to these five T's, then we can round up. The first one, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Yes, you have the vision. Don't, it, don't do it alone. Trust in the Lord to guide you. Trust in the Lord to lead you. And just like the word of God says, he will lead you and he will direct your path. The second T, think positively. Sometimes people will reason for, for another person, another people, for people in situations. Things happen and we begin to, not even positive, we read negative meaning to ideas, situations, and we begin to now run with the negative. Think positive. This Bible verse, Philippians 4, 8, 9. It says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, Meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Even when you're faced with negative situation, please turn it around and let it be positive that will come to your mind. Don't stay with negative people. When you're saying you want to be this, another person, please, you have your leg, move away. 
Don't let them contaminate you. Move with people that will give you words that will encourage you. People will say different things. People will give you and try to, 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 to pollute your mind. Me, resolve on God. Just like the Bible, Bible verse that we just said. said, whatever things that are good, that are lovely, are good. If, even people have done a negative thing to you, things that you know, yes, this person, I, he has done something terrible to me. Try and find something good about what that person has done. Maybe this person wasn't in a good mood. That was why I think. So that you will not hinder your, 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 your thoughts, your mind. Because you don't want, and after all of these little things, when your mind is corrupted, it affects everything around you. So just like the Bible says, guide your mind with all diligence. Guide it very well. Don't let anybody mess it up for you. You trust God. Look unto Jesus. This is where I'm going. This is what God is saying. These people or whoever it is, they are saying that. I'm putting them aside. Thank you so much for the advice. For I think my, I know my God says I should do this. Praise the Lord. The next one says, take one step at a time. Don't try to do everything at a time. Try one thing after the other. Praise the Lord. I know we want to multitask, but while you're multitasking, make sure that you accomplish one thing before you start another because it's going to just be like you're abandoning one thing and starting another. At the end, it's just going to be like jack of all trades, master of none. You don't want that to be your choice. The Bible says your word, Psalm 119, 119 verse 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. Let the word of God guide you. Step by step. You're about to take one step. God, what are you saying concerning this? Should I go? If God is not speaking to you directly, he, will, he can speak through people around you. You will know. Because you have the mind of man, of God in you. God will let you know when he's speaking to you. You have that peace and confidence that this is from God. Because some people can say, I'm not that spiritual. I'm telling you, the general verse of redeem started from somewhere. Somewhere by obeying every little instruction. Now you can do even greater things in the Lord. We too can do it. If we start obeying and following God's rule. You have that same heart of God in you. Praise the Lord. Thrive through. Thrive through. To grow, develop, and be successful. That means in the place of prayer, aim at succeeding. Pray until something happens. Keep on praying, keep on striving until you see yourself succeeding. On the way, it's possible for you to fail. But when you fail, take that failure as a learning step. Not a failure that, you, that will bring you down. That will make you think that the world has ended for you. Let it be a stepping stone for you. When I fail, I look at my failure and I start working on it. And I'm telling you, when I take that failure and I... Put everything, I mean, try to see the reason why I failed. I come out much better. Which I know we too, we, 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 we all, we've been to, we, we go to college, we know when we're studying for an exam, when you don't pass, you need to retake that exam. And when you're retaking, you go over all the things that you read before. You study and sometimes you, you are able to see the reason why you failed. So when you're taking the test again, you know this is where I need to focus on. You see the question again. It's easier for you because you've gone through it again. And when you go through the exam, you succeed even better than the first time. Even better than your mate. Thrive through. Don't give up. That you will not face challenges is a lie. You will face. It can be more than one. But if you can just remain focused, 
and just be determined that, yes, I will succeed. You will get there. The, 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 I mean, I think that's the last one. But I'm going to now read this Bible verse, Isaiah 40, 29 to 31. It gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not weary. They will walk and not be faint. Then James 1, 12, it says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast on the trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Everything has been said, yes. To go with the, the five T's, I trust in the Lord. I, yes, there's one that I missed which is something that I said I'm going to now remind you. Thankfulness. Whatever it is, be grateful, thankful. Thank God in all situations. And I know, Pastor, you just went through a series on thanksgiving to be thankful to God. So I don't need to go over that. Please, always say, give God the glory no matter what it is. Thank God in all situations. The act of gratitude, please, don't let, it, don't, let it, don't, don't let it be taken away from you. Don't let situation of life bombard you that you forget to thank God. Please always give God the glory. Even though things are not working, thank him. And say, thank you, Jesus, even though I tried. But I'm grateful that you have given me even the opportunity to do it. But I trust you. I know if it is your will, things will work out for me. I always give a series of, I mean, I gave it at the adult church. I remember when I was growing up, my, in my home, I would use it to round up. My parents, I mean, in Nigeria, we don't take uh, Coca-Cola, soda. Every, it's not something that you take every day. It's just once in a week. Sunday, after your lunch on Sunday, you are free to go to the fridge and pick a, a bottle of Coke. But my sister, my younger sister, it was on a Friday night. I can never forget. She just felt like, you know what, we ate rice. I cannot forget that one too. And she said, you know, with rice and Coca-Cola goes together. She said, what can I do to go into that fridge and get a bottle of Coke? And she knows my father likes music. So she started playing music. She went in front of my dad and started dancing. And you know, my daddy was so happy. I mean, she was like, Daddy, you know, digging and giving all the size then. My dad didn't ask her, what do you want? <laughs> he now said, a bottle of Coke. And my dad said, you know what, go and take it. Immediately, we all saw what happened. We said, eh, on Friday, you get to ask, Daddy, <laughs> you are the best, Baba, you know. And that gave everybody the opportunity to get Coke on Friday, which we were not supposed to get. Pork is only meant for what? Sunday. But because we made him happy, he was so, I mean, he was, I mean, my father is a, was a very quiet man. But he was so happy that day, he was just laughing like, oh my God, you know, see my children. We were all in the living room. He was smiling. And everybody will now took the coke like, hey, you know. Think of your heavenly father when you make him happy. What you don't ask for, he will give it to you. You can do anything if you can just show the heart of gratitude and appreciate him that, yes, God, I know you're a good God. And I'm going to refer you back to the drama that you had for, you gave us uh, last year um, about baggages. Don't forget that drama. Whatever is going to stop you from appreciating God, drop them right now. Drop them. Friends, relationship, anything that you know, they are baggages. Drop them. Drop them. Drop them. Drop them. You know those things. Don't let anything take your attention away from Jesus. 
With Jesus, we can do anything. But without him, we keep struggling. I want our eyes to be closed now. When we resolve in God, He turns around situation. He makes hopeless situation and brings hope out of it. But resolving in God only meant for those who know this God. Because you know who He is. What He can do. But if you have not given yourself to Jesus Christ, your trust is still in your ability of man. So I just want to implore you, if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, remember the first thing that we said is to trust in him. Please, I'm imploring you, the first thing that you ever need is Jesus. You need Jesus. I need Jesus. Jesus cannot be taken away from the picture. I'm imploring you, I'm begging you tonight, this morning, Please, come to Jesus. Give yourself to Jesus. Let him be the controller of your life. Let Jesus be your director. In your heart, if you know you have not given yourself to Jesus, why not tell him, Jesus, I give myself to you this morning. I surrender myself to you. Jesus, take charge. I resolve in you. And I know you are able to take me to that great expected hand. I know you are able to do what even I myself cannot even help myself to do. And if you have given yourself to Jesus, I want you now to just lift up your voice and commit those things that you desire from God. Commit them into his able hands. And just tell him, Father, I have confidence in you. I trust you. I know you did it. You've done it before. 2020, you by my side, I know I can do all things. Through you who strengthens me. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we give you all the glory. Father, we thank you for who you are and for what you have done for us. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for what you will do in the year 2020. We pray, Lord, as we have resolved our mind in following your direction in the year 2020, you have never for one point in time leave nor forsake your home. And we know you will not start. So we trust you, Lord, that you bring every of our expectation, bring them to pass. And let your name alone be glorified. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord Jesus. Accept our thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for watching our Ignite Sermon. Be sure to share this video with friends and family. Check us out on our social media for more information about our church. Be blessed.